All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for another live online learning session. Um, today, we have Mary Ann Post with us again, looking at Media Composer. Uh, this is kind of a part two of looking at advanced tracking tips and troubleshooting. Um, so we are excited to jump in. Um, before we get started, I'm just going to go over a couple of points with each of you. Um, this webinar is being recorded. You will be able to locate the recording on our website at avid.com. Um, you'll notice if you're in the Zoom session with us that your audio is muted. However, you are able to ask questions uh, using the Q&A function and uh, you're also able to raise your hand if you have a question. Um, if you can hear me now, whether you're watching us uh, in the Zoom call or on one of our um, social media platforms, go ahead and let me know where you're from so I can just get an idea of who's watching today. Um, I think that will be fun. So without further ado, um, welcome Mary Ann. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Mary Ann is an avid master instructor and has been working um, on video curriculum development with us for a while. So she is going to um, jump into this session. Are you ready, Marianne? Yes, I'm ready. Awesome. All right. All right. Thanks, Lainey. Hey, guys, I hope everybody's doing well. And yep, this is part two of working with tracking and troubleshooting. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right away so you guys can see what we're going to do today. And one quick thing so that all oh, my audio is good. And um, OK, so here's the option. I need to hide this is showing up apparently today for you guys. So let's make sure you guys don't have to stare at Zoom controls. OK. So last time, for those of you who attended last session, there was a couple tech issues of kind of an interplay between an added nuance, media composer nuance, and uh, Zoom, and then me too. So the first bit is just going to be a little bit of an overlap, and then we're going to go into some new examples. Okay, so super fast, just kind of a warm up here. Some of you guys will see this if you didn't attend the, new, the last session, this won't be familiar. But I'm going to pop into full screen here, shift command F on the Mac, shift control F on Windows, if you guys are looking for that shortcut. And I'm just going to play a bit. And we have these words that are following the one draft, but not the draft on the right. OK, so we went through this example last session. So just as a quick warm up, I'm just going to do a quick little review. And so the layer two, which goes along with the are we there yet draft is a imported text. So it comes in as a Mac key. So any text program you might use that you can output as an alpha channel, whether you pay for the program or not, um, is at, Media Composer doesn't care, you can do that. But I get the question quite frequently, can I do this in Avid Title or Plus? And the example is, or the answer is, yeah, most likely. So that's going to be our quick warm up review of how to set up tracking. Um, I did map my edit and effects workspaces to my keyboard so that if you see me switching very fast without coming over to the right, that's why. I just mapped them to a couple F keys. So I'm going to hit that right now and head into the effects workspace. And to do and minimize that, to do the tracking, the Big keys are layer selection, which we've got them on my title or plus layer, and object selection. Now, I do find with title or plus that if I could start tracking with my object selected, it does not necessarily uh, take the track. So we'll want to pay attention to that after as well. So you can see I have a tracking parameter group and no tracker, of course. So I'm going to pop into the tracking tool, which if uh, you're working with an effect that includes tracking options, you'll see the tracking tool on the right side. Okay. So I just hit that. Now I can set up my tracking. And what's nice is if you're working with like HD footage and above, you can be as sloppy as me. I tend to just grab the tracker, move it over and go. So we'll see. I want to attach it to the object that's moving. So in this case, a lovely giraffe. 
Um, and it's got nice geometrical shape, contrast. There's nothing that's going to get in the way to distract media composer. So really straightforward track. And I noticed that I'm in Titler Plus, but at the in the middle of my interface set here, it says track background, uh, which it will do just great. And that's the default, which is nice. So if you're tracking graphics, it, it assumes that, yeah, you're probably going to track the background and not your own text that's not moving. So I'm going to go ahead and track. And it's going and it's sticking to the ear of my drafts. I'm pretty optimistic that this is going to work. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to close this. Now, it's not going to show up yet because I need to make sure I select my object and assign my object to this tracking point A. So you could have several pieces of text in the same layer. It might get a little confusing and then assign each text object to a different tracker. All right, but now there we go. Now you probably may notice that I have this bouncing line. So this is one trade-off because of composition. To get this line uh, to work in Titler Plus, I actually had to crop. And whenever you move around, the crop kind of appears. So hopefully they'll, they'll work on that. But, or that I just pick a shot with better composition. But the tracking itself is working. In the spike, the bouncing line, which is kind of cute. All right, so there we go. So there's our warm up that just took you real fast through the tracking workflow. Um, some of you guys will recognize this. This is an obscured object. And a, com a question came in last session. So feel free to ask questions. I'll definitely answer them if I can, or it often inspires another session. Um, but the question came on, what if, what if you're tracking something and the tracking that you're following goes off screen? And this is actually an, an example of that. It, uh, uh, we're going to be obscured, this cyclist here, gets obscured by this tree. So it's the same thing as if I were tracking something down at the bottom and it popped off screen with camera movement or something like that. So the principle is the same. So I actually have a couple of examples that will address what happens if whatever you're tracking disappears, either off the edge of the screen or by a tree or another object. Okay, so um, the tip with this one, uh, so here's the setup. I wanna blur her face and then we're also gonna follow her thought bubble that was definitely created in another program. It's not uh, Titler Plus. So um, I always like to create my objects and get that all set up and then track, which if this were a straightforward track without this tree, not a problem. But so a tip is if you anticipate any kind of troubleshooting, like an object going off screen or being obscured, set up your trackers first, okay? Um, so I'm in my image category. I'm gonna actually apply the paint effect to this and I'm just gonna pop right into tracking. And then in my tracking, I'm gonna start at the beginning as always. If you're missing your tracker, that's because you're probably not at the first frame. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be super sloppy as usual. Really, the only time I ever have to change these boxes is if something that media, you might pass by something that Media Composer might latch onto, which definitely can happen um, and will happen with the tree because she disappears. So I have this set up and I'm going to let it go. Now, when the tree issue appears that we're all anticipating, I'll hit my space bar to stop tracking, but I'm going to let it go completely across the tree until we see her again, you'll see why in a moment, but let's go ahead and start tracking, all good. Yep, totally messed up. She reemerges and I'm just gonna hit space bar to stop tracking. In my tracker window, we'll see a gray line that's indicating what was tracked. The red indicates what hasn't been tracked, but I need that tracking data, even though it's wrong, to make this effect work. I need something to work with. Okay, so that's a troubleshooting tip right there. Okay, um, so then I'm just gonna go to the spot where she's kind of emerging. In fact, I might even go to here um, just to show that even if she's like partially exposed and not completely out from behind the tree, that if your footage is high resolution, Media Composer should track it for you. But let's see. Now, um, I wanna start my tracking here. 
but um, I don't have my tracking control. So to do a second track or a third or however many you need, you just right click in the tracking uh, track and then you add new tracker region. And when you do that, up pops your box, okay? And notice too that now I have this line so I can get back to here uh, fairly quickly. And I'm just using my left and right arrow keys to get um, to where I need to be. So then I'm just gonna move my box over here again, pretty sloppy. Um, and hopefully um, that works. And then I'm gonna track from here. Okay, and they're following. Maybe not my best placement ever, because um, I think before I was more on her nose and glasses. But for our purposes, technically, this isn't gonna be the cleanest, but it will be the technical is accurate. Okay, so we've got that. But if we uh, look at this, I'm gonna come over into my tracking data and look at current points. Okay, so um, when I, Let's go back to tracking data here. When I go forwards, and I'm just hitting my right arrow right now, we'll see that when we hit the tree, there's all the dancing stuff. And then all of a sudden it picks up again, okay? So what I need to do is fill in that gap. And I can't tell Media Composer, please guess. Um, with, um, I kind of have to do it manually. So the good news is she's moving in a straight line. So all I have to do is mark it in and out when this goes awry. So I'll find that spot. So it's basically about here that it goes awry. And so I'm gonna mark it in. I'm just gonna hit I on my keyboard. You can right click and use in range and that kind of thing, but why when you have I and L? And then I'm gonna go to the spot where we, the frame before we did our setup and I'm gonna mark it out, okay? So I just flagged the range where it's totally awry, not following her. And then I'm gonna go to point range and choose in to out. Okay, so we have this straight line. It looks like it's kind of working, but um, that's a little deceptive. So what I'm gonna do now is select these and delete the data. And then what, as you can see, they're highlighted in white. So I'm just gonna hit delete on my keyboard backspace on windows. And now what that's setting me up for is to catch up with where she's at, okay? Um, so then I'm going to go back to, let's just go to all and I'm just going to, or let's go to current actually. I'm just going to kind of step through, see if this is working. Yep. And it picks right back up. Okay. So because it went behind and it's not going to be just hanging out there and doing odd things, we should be good to go. And I'm scared. So you can see it just kind of follows along now the current point along her path. Otherwise, what you need to do if there's any issues is you can go frame by frame and move this while you're at current. Okay, so now I'm gonna just draw my shape. So I'm gonna exit tracking and now I'll draw my shape at my first frame. And I have one that's done because this, as you can see, I'm pretty sloppy. It takes a minute. Um, to build these, maybe we'll give it a little bit of feathering. That should be pretty good. Let me take a bias down. All right, we did a whole session on paint effects, drawing, um, bias, feathering, all of that. So that's another session. But um, it's not working yet because I do need to come into tracking and tell Media Composer to follow point A. Okay. So if I'm close, we're good, okay? So it is following really, really well, despite my poor drawing skills and sloppy tracker setup. Um, so for our purposes, that's good. Now you're probably noticing that, well, now the tree's blurred um, and you can see your blur object. We're gonna fix that in just a second. Um, but before I do that, I do wanna apply the same tracking data to the question mark. Um, it's following her, so there's really no reason to retrack this and do all the troubleshooting again. So I'm gonna pop back into my tracker. Okay, there's my point A stuff, everything. Okay, um, I'm gonna clear my marks just in case, it shouldn't matter. Um, 
And what I'm gonna do is right click on the left side of my tracker. So I get the option to copy enabled tracks. And so it'll, tra it'll copy the whole tracking data, um, not just this current point. And then I'm gonna pop into this effect and enable tracking so that I can paste it. But before I do that, I'm just gonna clear these. Okay. So now notice that I have all that tracking data. So because I did that, this is uh, following. Now it's not perfect. So I'm just gonna do a little quick position at the beginning and then position at the end. Let me just double check one thing before I do that. My tracking, even though I enabled it, it turned off. So I just wanna make sure that's on and now we should be good. Okay, so it's always select your subject. And before you start troubleshooting with keyframes, because it's sometimes necessary, just double check that uh, your tracking data is on. Okay, even if you selected it before you pasted, okay, which I did before. Okay, so that's all working. The last piece of this is to fix the tree. Okay, and that's, I'm going to do a little bit of setup for this. This is a Mac key effect that's not going to be tracked. So I just want to get you guys through a little bit of the nuts and bolts, but essentially uh, we'll just take a look at the final, but it takes another layer of V1. So what I'm going to do is I actually set up markers before our session to save some time. That's the section I need to uh, paste. Just when we see the blur object and the thought bubble going across the tree. So I pre-flag that. Then I'm just going to deselect all my tracks. Shift Command A took care of that. Shift Control A on Windows. And I'm enabling V1. As if I go back to source record mode, I just hit my, my effects workspace or edit workspace. I can actually with my in and out, my track selector set, option, alt on Windows, C, and I just copied that. And I'm just gonna patch up to V3 and overwrite. So I basically have the exact same piece of video. It just happens to have a pain effect that I'll remove, okay? I like this method rather than trying to match frame and then do the edit because um, I can use a couple shortcuts and get this. So now let me just go into full screen a second. If I step through, we'll see an odd thing. The original footage pops on. This is where you need an animat, okay? Animat and some key framing will take care of that. So because this is a tracking session, I actually have that done. So if I pop into my effects workspace here and click my element, you'll see, there it is. I, I did a mat so that all that's on this layer is this portion of the tree. And then the key framing is actually for position really straightforward as you see me scrubbing through here. The thing that I troubleshot with the extra key frames is actually the feathering because the face object is so small it she shows up in the tree's feathering, but then the thought bubble has issues. So that's all this keyframing is, is troubleshooting the feathering so that in the final, and let me, I'm just gonna step through it, see how good I did. So in the final, it's the exact same tracking I set up for you guys, everything. I just have a mat key object on a higher track so that they go behind the tree. Okay. It's a little bit of layers. So yeah, when you're obscuring, you have to kind of isolate that section and delete the key, the tracking data. So you just lasso it in the, re the effect preview monitor and there you go. Okay. Okay. Um, an extension of that that I'm going to point out is uh, we will use smartphones and smart devices and shooting those screens all the time, but not with the person on it because it glares and all kinds of reasons. So we tend to put the image that we're talking to in post, and this is no exception to that. So I'm um, just going to walk through the tracking. As you can see, there's a lot of layers here. When I started this, I had V1 set up, which is the phone. Okay. So I'm just going to select my layer here, go into effects mode here, select my layer. So the phone is 
actually moving. Um, not much, but enough that it is moving. And the corner of it, so this is the corner of the screen down here, actually does go off screen, okay? So that's all I wanted, to, I added this one in to answer that question from last session. So how are we gonna fix that? So then who are we putting in screen? Well, we're putting Mima is the character's name in this particular um, ad. And um, all that's going on with this is uh, kind of a picture in picture effect, okay? Uh, you can see that it does not align with the phone at all. So a note about setup. Uh, let me just switch one thing here so that I can have my effects editor where I want to position. There we go. Uh, so setup, it is gonna be a corner pin, but if you're working with an element that's not the same shape, the same aspect ratio as the screen you're tracking, you wanna do a little bit of work. So in this case, this is not a horizontal 16 by nine screen, it's vertical. So what I did is, um, and I'm just turning these off in 3D warp. This is a 3D warp so that I can um, have enable disable buttons to show you guys better. So essentially what I did was I scaled the image so it's closer to the screen size. As we wanna see Mima, we don't need to see all the background and you wouldn't in a vertical display anyways. Then um, there's some positioning and some rotation. And then the big one is crop. So you wanna crop it to that same shape. And all of this was set up at like the first frame, okay? So then I'm ready to do like a corner pin tracking of this. So I'll go into corner pin and then I'm just gonna enable this, all four of these. Okay, what's nice about this is this is set up with 3D warp to not have to come back here and turn this back on, hopefully, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna set up my four points. Now, because the corner disappears, I'm actually gonna track elsewhere. So if your shape is pretty much the shape you're, you're tracking into, this will work out well. So I'm gonna do my floppy setup for this corner and then this corner. This, I'm gonna pick a little scratch, which you guys probably can't see. There's a lovely little scratch there in the screen. And then same with this guy. There's a lovely scratch right there. Um, so notice I'm not going with the corners of the screen as you might um, think. Okay, because especially this one's not gonna work because it goes off screen. Okay. So there's a tip there. It doesn't always have to be the exact same shape when you're tracking. And let's see how my sloppy setup works. So I'm just uh, following this. Uh, maybe I should have made this a little bit shorter. Six seconds, but it's going pretty quick. And nothing's bouncing around all over the place. It's pretty much tracking what I asked it to. Okay. Um, there's nothing coming in to distract Media Composer. All right. And then I'm gonna go to effects results for this one because uh, everything's still enabled, just double checking that. And then when I play, it works out well, okay? Now, uh, you're probably noticing that, well, that's great, but it doesn't exactly fit the shape of the phone. This is where another animat comes into play. And I've used this in animat examples before for the drawing part of it. So I've already got that done. So you would once again, copy the base layer, kind of like I did earlier with the cycling shot. So you would you know, mark in um, option C or option drag up, alt on windows, however you want to copy it. And then you would add an animat to this, So which I have. So here's my animat shape. And then I'm going to just monitor that. So that's working. The challenge is the shape is not moving. So it's still not aligned yet, okay? So, stop play back there. All I need to do is once again, grab this tracking data and it's any enabled track, any enabled uh, tracks. If there was a track you didn't need, you can just disable it over here. So this will determine what gets copied, okay? So it's not like an in and out range or a, the point range, it's, the entire track unless it's disabled. So I'm gonna right click, copy enabled tracks. And then I'm gonna come up here and enable, uh, select my shape first here. Media Composer is actually helping me out. And I'm just gonna 
create four trackers here, um, which actually I didn't need to create all four of those because I'm going to paste my data. So just one. Sometimes when I right click, it'll allow me to paste with nothing in here. Sometimes I just need a tr temporary tracker. Um, so my paste is there, but just make sure that if you did add a tracker that you delete the one that you didn't do. And you'll know because there's a red line uh, always appears until you start your tracking. Okay, now not quite done. Notice it says no tracking up here. So now I just have to assign them. And you want them in the exact same order as your picture in picture or 3D warp in my case. Otherwise they're gonna cross over each other. So uh, I think I did that. So sometimes it's nice to label stuff. And there we go. It's inside the shape and the shape's moving. Okay. Um, so a couple options. Now, one more little obscure thing. Um, now the screen goes off screen which if this were not, didn't have some letter boxing uh, for the aspect ratio, wouldn't be a big deal. But if we go into full screen mode here, you'll see, notice the corner of the phone goes over the letter boxing. Okay, and that's baked into the footage. So my, there's two ways you can kind of take care of that. If you're going to, um, let me just pop back between these. If you're going to be masking the entire sequence, you can right click and use your target mask feature. If it's just this clip, which in this case it is, um, you'll want to just add a mask effect to filler. So what I just did was did add edits on V4, added a mask effect. So when it does go off screen, it goes behind the filler track mask effect. Um, let me just uh, go into full screen here. So you can see now that there's that corner, but it's hidden by the mask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, one last quick tip uh, example is chroma key. If you have a chroma key and use a still background like this Agent Zero, our hero showing up in a kitchen, which may become my next Zoom background because it looks lovely. Um, the challenge here is the chroma key is working, but there's a camera move. So it's really odd that there's a camera move. So what you need to do is um, pop into effects mode here on the chroma key layer and do a little bit of setup. Now this is done with Spectrum at, because of my zoom resolution, I'm losing my window layout that I saved earlier is why I'm bouncing between effects and edit mode here, uh, workspace. So there's parameters for like position, scaling and crop, but there's no tracking in Spectrum at, because I don't have my tracking tool. Um, doesn't matter, you can promote this to 3D. And when you promote this to 3D, you get all your tracking options, okay? And so what happens with your foreground then is it's in the, or the spectrum mat gets added into the foreground group. So you can still tweak your chroma key and all that kind of stuff after. Because once you promote to 3D, there's no demote from 3D, okay? Um, and then I know we're super short on time, but I just want to make sure I show you guys quick setup here. This is going to be really, really sloppy. We'll see if it works. Um, I'm going to open up my tracking tool and I need two trackers. Notice agent zero disappears. That's because he's on V2 and Media Composer assumes you want to track the background. The background is still, there's nothing to track. So what I'm going to do in this case, whenever you're working with a Chrome key type effect is track your foreground. Your element should come back, okay? Um, I had a little bit of a bad mix there. So I just want to scrub back. I'm good. So I'm going to set up a tracker for this. This has a perspective change. It's a little bit of a rotate on the camera head. So I'm actually going to add two trackers. So I've got that tracker. And then we'll do another quick setup tracker. You can change tracker colors. There's this green point. So I can see it good, but maybe we'll do a contrast color like that. So this was shot this way. Um, anticipating that still kitchen that Agent Zero is gonna show up in. So then I'm just gonna track this and my sloppiness paid off again. 
Um, it helps to work with high resolution footage. All right, so now that's set up. Um, this time, when I close my tracker window, actually all I'm gonna do is just grab my 3D warp and apply it to the layer below, okay? Now I have to turn some stuff off because I didn't, the kitchen now gets inherits agent zero's cropping and all of that, so I'm gonna do cropping. And then the two trackers I need is a scale track. Enable that and notice it automatically knew which two points. Media Composer is pretty smart, especially with 3D warp. Tracking was built for 3D warp. Um, the only issue now is during the camera move is when the kitchen moves, we see the edge. Thankfully, I'm linking to high resolution footage. So if I scale this up a bit, I'm not going to be zooming in and losing picture quality. And so maybe like about there, just eyeballing it and be more precise, of course. And then here we go. So when he moves, he moves with the kitchen. It's as if he's there, except for the horrible lighting, which is another topic. All right, so there you go. Um, thanks for your patience. I know I went just a little bit over, but if we have questions, I will go ahead and take those. Yes, so I'm seeing a couple questions come through. Uh, let's see. Um, I had someone ask on LinkedIn. Um, he mentioned that they tried to use original Avid titles on Tidler Plus and they weren't able to do so. Um, he wants to know if you have any insight on why that did not work. Trying to use, so like the classic title tool, trying to upgrade this to Titler Plus. Yeah, um, I'm assuming that's what he's referencing. Um, yeah, so depends on your platform. I'm on the Mac, so I can't even use traditional um, title tool because it's not a 64 bit app. So I haven't been able to uh, access that. So I found that I just had to recreate my titles. And I know if you're going to something classic, um, that could be a challenge. Um, if you want to still use those titles in a more recent version, you can, if you render them and have the render data, then you should be able to update. But um, they're, they're two separate applications, Titler Plus and um, the title tool. So it's not like with Marquee, uh, which is another classic title, Titler that you could promote. There really isn't a promote to Titler Plus. So maybe you can grab, you know, copy some of that text and paste it and see what happens. But they're, they're algorithms and engineered differently. Interesting. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have another question from Max. Um, they are wondering how you can correctly track an object coming into the scene that's not visible at the beginning of the clip. Yeah. So what I do in that situation is add edits. So let's just say that like, if she started off screen and I needed to track I would just uh, totally mess up my sequence here. So is in our imaginary scenario here, say like the beginning of the tree is where we first see her. Obviously it's not, but for our purposes, you'll want to do add edits. Okay, so at the first point you see the element and you could possibly track it, add an edit there. And then let's just say it's there and then add edits. So then you apply whatever effect it is you're trying to do and um, add edit um, or, and just track that portion. Now, the very beginning, you might have to do a little bit of manual keyframing as it comes on. Um, but yeah, I find the very first point on my subject that I think Media Composer can latch onto without getting confused. And I use add edit to do that track and I just track that section when they're on screen. Awesome. Oh, good. Um, okay, I have another question from Cam. Um, they're asking about copying and pasting keyframes and if there's a trick mm -hmm. to it. Uh, they mentioned that oftentimes uh, they're not able to copy all the keyframes from an effect to another effect. 
Um, and so they're wondering if there's an easy, surefire way to do that. Um, yeah, if you're copying all your keyframes from one effect to another, actually this has, it may not have keyframes anymore, but let's find out. Um, oh, this is the final. So this one had a bunch of keyframes. Um, if I'm trying to go across an effect and I want all the keyframes, I'm much more likely to save this to a bin that is minimized down here. I'm much more likely to save it. And a lot of times what I'll just do, just to ensure that I'm in my last state with all the keyframes, I'll just select them all. So Command-A in my case, Control-A on Windows. And then I'll just drag and drop the effect to my bin. And then when I come to another instance, like where I started set up over here, I can like a double click or drag and drop. And it applied it with all the keyframes. Um, and then I'll troubleshoot as needed. So all of that is actually working now exactly like this element. Um, when it comes to copying, like say this keyframe and needing it elsewhere, I'll select it in Command C and Command V. Um, notice it didn't actually paste it. Usually, what I need to do is add a keyframe first, and then when I Command V, it will paste the data there um, without a problem. Okay, and there wasn't really anything going on there. But add the keyframe first before you uh, paste it is usually the other part of that. But if it's like all my keyframes um, or a good portion of them, I'll go ahead and save a template, apply it to the other clip, and then uh, troubleshoot from there. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Um, OK, I think we have time for one more. Um, I have someone asking <clears throat> on the phone effect, uh, can uh -huh. the screen reflections be feathered in to make it look more realistic? Yeah, so then um, the challenge, the thing I would wanna do with that then is create another layer of this because right now the screen's being keyed out. Um, let's see if I can see this. So you can see it's being, uh, keyed in. So you'd make another layer and key it out and then you can take down opacity, so your object opacity, and then you'll get a little bit of that. Um, I mean, obviously in this case, and I could probably even just even with what I have, um, the borders are going to show up a little bit because of object opacity, but you can see now I'm even getting my reflection. So I'd probably create another layer and then um, uh, do that effect so that none of the edges start coming into view. Hmm. Excellent. Very cool. Well, I just learned something new. So that's always fun. <laughs> cool. Um, I think that's all the questions that we have time for right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen one more time. Just go over some of the sessions that are coming up. Um, so we do have a session <clears throat> next week, uh, same day, same time, looking again at Media Composer, uh, this time focusing on improving system performance. Um, and then a week from that session, we have another Media Composer session focusing on relinking from low res to high res. So uh, Marianne, you're covering both of those sessions, correct? Um, I am. Awesome. So yeah, if yeah, I'll see. if you have <laughs> yes, if you would like to join us and you'd like to um, watch another session with Marianne, uh, we'd love to have you join us for those sessions. Um, but other than that, uh, thank you all so much for joining us, Marianne. As always, you've been lovely. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Take care. We'll see you all next time.